bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace keep playing guys keep playing i love the atmosphere of worship Today is a very special day for us as a family of believers. We've been praying and fasting for two weeks, and we have framed this service as the blessing. As Patrick and Ron, they create a music bed, and I'm going to be teaching with that. I want this experience for you to be more like a harp and bowl out of Revelations 5, where harp represents worship and bowl represents, uh, they was used to capture the, the, the incense, the prayers of the saints. So we're going to be interspersing worship with prayer and prayer with worship. And I'm going to be inviting some prayer leaders to come and to pray with you about big topics that oftentimes we struggle with, whether it may be finances and business or healing and deliverance, or perhaps your singleness, marriage and family issues. And then we always have as the big issue in next generation that we would be able to shape our children so that they can go in the way that God wants them to go. But before I get going, would you bow your heart with me, please, as I lead you in a word of prayer? Father, thank you so much for your tremendous kindness, your love. Meet with us today as we worship and pray and invite you so we can bless each person. In fact, I'm asking you this in the wonderful name of Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. My topic is, what is God's blessing? What does that mean to be blessed by God? Why have the blessing service? I'm glad you asked. I want you to find your way to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And before I start teaching, and I'm only going to be teaching for five-minute segments or so, so I can spend time praying with you about specific things. I'm standing here in front of this prayer box that I invited you over the past couple of weeks to either fill out a card if you came to in-person service and put your prayer needs on that card and drop it in the box, and many did. Others emailed in their prayers, and I thank you for emailing your prayer because I'm going to be praying for you at the end of our teaching and sharing and harp and bowl experience because I'm believing God to do amazing things. You know, here's a person that wants to experience spiritual renewal, better relationship with my children, restoration of my family life. And so this is a topic that's very important. And you may say, well, man, that's my topic. Here's a person that says, I need to find a way to save money and stop spending. I need a better health, no more fibroids, no blood sugar issues, specific. So you're talking about healing and deliverance and breakthrough. But I want to go to God's word to frame the topic of what is God's blessing. The Apostle Paul spent some time writing to the church in Corinth. His second letter to them in chapter 9 and verse 8, listen to what Paul says. God can bless you with everything you need, and you will always have more than enough to do all kinds of good things for others. Interestingly enough, when you know the historical framework and foundation of the text, Paul was actually trying to gather funds from the church at Corinth so that fund could be combined with the funds that he had gathered from the churches at Macedonia. And he wanted to send this collective gift to the church in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was going through a devastating time. And by and large, at that point, most of the Christian communities were believers, Jewish believers that had accepted Christ as their Messiah. And so here are now non-Jews, Gentiles, who did not have any idea, did not know anyone personally in Jerusalem. They were not acquainted or familiar with them. In fact, the Macedonians and the Corinthians were going through a very tough economic time themselves. And then the Apostle Paul, when he said to them, Hey guys, God can bless you with everything you need. And you will always have more than enough to do all kinds of good things for others. What the Corinthians discovered, as did the Macedonians, is this. When God blesses you, it makes up for all kinds of lack in your life. 
What you need is a divine blessing in your life. What you need is for God to really visit with you. And that's why we frame today as the blessing. Let me define that word blessing. What does it mean? The word blessing, it's a noun that means a happiness produced by some experience of God's favor. Blessing means the experiencing of divine kindness, mercy, or goodness. In other words, God wants to bless you. And when I think about it, I recognize that there's certain things that when I I'm stepping into it or places, so to speak. The old timers used to use the word, you need to get under the spout where the glory is being poured out. And do you realize that salvation prompts blessings? When you think about that, salvation is when you invite Christ into your life to change you, to wash away your sins. And by you experiencing salvation, you're actually coming under the spout of heaven where the glory is coming out. Paul, when he wrote to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Here Paul is distinguishing between spiritual blessings and material blessings. We're going to be playing, praying about spiritual blessings as well as material, but don't let material blessings be the only perspective you hold to that says that's a blessing. No, it's more encompassing than that. God doesn't limit his blessings to material things alone because the unbelievers, many of them are blessed with material things. But what about the spiritual things? And so God is intimately concerned about working a miracle in your life, maybe you need healing and deliverance in your life. Maybe you have children that are wayward and they need to be healed from their waywardness. Maybe you're struggling with kids that have all kinds of learning challenge. Maybe it may be psychological where they're just giving up. Let's wait on the Lord right now as we worship and pray for healing and deliverance. Come on, let's let's worship. This is a house of miracles. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. Father, we come today crying out for healing and deliverance. You see those in dire distress, that one that just got a doctor's report of cancer. You see those battling chronic pain, some with fibroids, my God, heart situations, blood disorders, you see, you know, we're asking you today to heal, that you would stretch forth your hands and heal that person, that that fibroid is gone. We're asking you today for masses to dissolve every cancerous mass. Let it be dissolved. God, do a work even now. We ask you where there's lungs and problems with the lungs. Would you heal? And God, you are the deliverer. Every person, you dealing with addictions, whether it's alcoholism, that today, God, you would deliver. If it's discouragement, my God, won't you meet that one? Your son, your daughter, deliver, my God. Those who are so lonely, they want to give up. You see the spirit of suicide, that handsome. God, we're asking you today that you would arise and deliver. You're the God who sets free, the God who delivers and heals. And so we're asking you today that you would do that this very day. 
healed and delivered. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. I believe you're come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive. God, I pray for the next generation who you love so dearly, who you're concerned about, who you have a plan for. God, I pray for the parents and the churches that you would literally strengthen them and empower them to reach them. Give us creativity, strategies, and wisdom to be able to impact their lives and raise them up, God. God, I pray that a spirit of obedience would fall on the next generation. God, I pray that they would not give in to worldly temptations, but that they would become wholly devoted followers of you, Jesus, so they can experience the satisfaction and fulfillment that comes with being a child of God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen troubled souls delivered. I've seen addicts finally free. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We serve a God that's so amazing that nothing is beyond his ability or his power. I don't know what you're struggling with today, but I do know we serve a God that he's not alienated or divorced from your struggle. He's very sympathetic to where you are and he wants to not only comfort you, but bless you. And when I believe and, and think about that, not only does salvation prompt blessings, but service produces blessings. In the wisdom of God, he tied our ability to get blessed based on our actions towards others. Do you remember the famous sermon of Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount? Jesus actually climbed the mountainside and all of these people climbed along with him and they're there listening as he's there on the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, the scripture says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Jesus, he's letting us know that when you are walking in righteousness, right living, right thinking, right behaving, right actions. When you have an orientation of justice and equity and fairness towards people that are experiencing a plight, when they're experiencing lack, when they need a helping hand, when they need a hand up, not a hand out, but they need compassion from someone who cares about them and don't want anything in return other than the opportunity to help. Do you know what that does? That produces a blessing. That act of service does something not only inside of you where there's this feeling of, man, goodness, this feeling of satisfaction. It also creates this, this sense in the recipient, man, you took time out to help me. Service produces blessings. A number of years ago, I was invited to speak in South Korea, but they wanted to make sure that I was able to connect with the Korean community. And so they first invited me to this huge gathering of Koreans in Brooklyn, about a thousand people. 
I was going into the elevator to go down to the room where everybody was meeting. In the elevator was this young man. He looked about in his early 20s. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a student. I'm a graduate student in physics and some prestigious university in California. And I said, what are you going to do after you graduate? And this Korean young man coming out of prestigious university with a degree in physics shortly could make a whole lot of money. He said to me this, which I'll never forget. He said, I'm answering God's call to serve him in the Middle East with my physics degree, but I'm really on curve, covert operation with the Holy Spirit to minister to people and to reach them for Christ. I'll never forget that. You know what that underscored for me? It underscored service produces blessings. He was excited about the idea going to the Middle East to preach Christ as he functioned and served as a physicist. Jesus underscored the idea that service produces blessings. There, as the beatitude continues in Matthew 5 and verse 9, our Lord said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. If you will work hard at peacemaking, maybe in your school, work hard at peacemaking, maybe on your job, work hard at peacemaking in your church, in your community, in your extended family, be that liaison, be that go-between, be that reconciler, that action that you partake in, that service that you provide, the Lord says, service produces blessings. I want us to continue waiting on the Lord as we worship Him. And I want to pray with you about finances and blessings and, the, you know, and what God wants to do in your life. He has great things that He wants to accomplish with us, with our families, among our singles, among our marriages. Come on, Lord. Too good to not believe Too good to not believe And God, right now, I want to lift up the singles, the marriages, and families right now before your throne. Lord, I pray that you would restore a double blessing for all the trouble that they had gone through in the past seasons. God, I lift up singles to you right now where they have felt hopelessness, let hope arise back into their spirit. Where they have felt weak, let strength come back to their bones right now. I declare over you a double blessing and a double portion that good things and greater things have yet to come for you singles. And right now for you married people, I declare a double blessing of restoration of love and mercy upon marriages right now in Jesus' name. God, bless these marriages. Bless these covenants right now. Let love and joy abound. Let your fun be in the midst of that marriage, God, where there has been brokenness and unforgiveness. Let forgiveness be released over them. Let peace be restored to these marriages, God. I declare and decree your love over those marriages. And Lord, for families, we declare a double blessing for these, um, for these families, God. I declare restoration, we declare unity, we declare wisdom, and we declare peace in the households where there has been trouble, where there has been so many things going on behind the scenes that we couldn't see. Let your peace arise, let your peace shr shroud the entire household, God. Let wisdom come to the parents. Let, let peace and love come to the children. 
God, I declare that these houses and these families would be houses of miracles. So Lord, we declare and decree that you restore double for all the trouble that has gone past. You're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen Are too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love After everything I've seen You're too good to not believe Too good to not believe Father, I lift up every need for financial provision. And even those business leaders and those who have a heart and a desire to start a business. Are you not Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides? Lord, would you move in a powerful way those who are unemployed? We ask that you loose a job right now in Jesus' name. One at a healthy living wage. For those who may desire a raise or a promotion, we loose it right now in your name, Jesus. And God, for those business leaders who may be struggling because of the economy or because of COVID restrictions, we thank you, God, that 2022 is going to be the year that they will prosper and be in success. Lord, that you will allow people all over the internet to find their business because you favor it in the algorithms. God, bring customers, bring savviness, bring ideas, bring financial provision. And even those who are wanting to start a business, they have that desire, but they may not have an idea. They may not have a direction. God, would you provide direction would you give wisdom? Are you not the God who gives it freely? We thank you for what you're going to do, even in their lives. For the businesses that are going to be sprouted up in your house. For the financial provision that there's going to be no lack. Because you are the giver of every good gift. We thank you in Jesus' name. have been having this service that we frame it the blessing it's been like a harp and bowl experience there's worship and prayer and prayer and worship there's warfare and worship praise and petition and there's this inseparable way that we've been presenting and that I've been teaching and what we've learned already when you think about God's blessing salvation prompts blessing Service produces blessings, but there's also this third component about God's divine, divine blessings, and that is people pronounce blessings. This is why it's so important that we allow a, a spiritual community to form around us, to include us, a place of belonging. The Bible tells us this in the book of Numbers, chapter 6. God was telling Moses something that is now handed down to us. Verse 22 says, The Lord commanded Moses to tell Aaron and his sons to use the following words in blessing the people of Israel. May the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. And the Lord said, if they pronounce my name as a blessing upon the people of Israel, I will bless them. Do you see how clear that is? It wasn't a prayer that they were praying over the people of God. 
It was a pronouncement that they were making over the people of God. They were decreeing it. It was on God's heart. It was on his heart to say to Moses, tell Aaron the priest and his sons who are also priests, make sure that you pronounce a blessing of my people. In fact, God says, use these words. Say this over my people. Let them hear these words come from your mouth. They're my words coming out of lips of clay, but it's not earthly human words or earthly human blessings. It is a divine blessing that I'm speaking over my people through human individuals. I want you to see how necessary it is for blessings. And in the moment, I'm going to be pronouncing a blessing over you. And I'm going to be praying over the prayer requests for so many people. But I want you to recognize that even in the New Testament, we're visited with this point that people pronounce blessings. In Hebrews 7 verse 7, the writer says, And without doubt, the lesser is blessed by the greater. You may say, well, who's the lesser? Who's the greater? <laughs> well, <laughs> the greater is the one who's pronouncing the blessing. The lesser is the one who's the recipient of the blessing. And you can be the greater and you can be the lesser in many relationships and in many instances. If you're a parent, take the posture of being the, the, the greater. Pronounce a blessing over your child before he goes to school, before she falls asleep at night. Says, sweetheart, I speak blessings over you that you're going to become someone that's powerful. You're going to serve God all the days of your life. You're going to thrive in your career. I pronounce that you'll be a strong man of God. I speak that you will know peace. I pronounce over you that when you grow and mature, that you're going to find the woman that God has in store for you from the beginning of time. And when you get married to her, you will have a healthy, healthy, God-centered, Christ-oriented marriage. I speak blessings over you. And so you speak that over your children. Speak that over your spouse. Speak that over your job. Speak that over your co-workers. In fact, I'm going to really speak that over you if you've sent in a prayer request. All these prayer requests that are here. I want you to see this person saying, God, I need better health. In fact, I picked up the very same card that I picked up earlier. I need healing in fibroids. And this person is struggling with blood sugar. Father, I speak healing to this individual. I ask that you give them the ability to experience healing in their fibroids. I ask that you cause their blood sugar level to come to normalcy. Dear God, this person represented by the card, I pray for a renewed and transformed mind that they get free from the past where the past has haunted them. They can't get the ideas out of their mind. I pray for healing, dear Lord. I pray for direction and the funds to start a nonprofit that can be able to serve the community. And this person wants to serve teens. I speak that they would have all that they need and more than enough. God, I pray for this individual that wants to be on the right team at work so they can be able to find their fit, a place of belonging. You said you set the solitary in families. I pray that they would discover their work family and the place where they belong, that they may be able to find their niche. I speak healing to each person represented on these prayer request cards. I speak divine blessings for each one. I speak for each nation represented by each card. I speak healing to those nations they're God. I speak breakthrough even in the Middle East for those who said, I need to know Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you open up a door, visit them in dreams and in visions that they will know that Jesus is the Savior of the world, even for those in parts of the world where they never have heard the message of Christ. I pray, God, that you use them and visit them in unusual ways. Father, I thank you for those even in South America that don't know who you are. Bring to that the world, that part of the world, a revelation of your grace and your love. And for those who are wayward, dear God, the prodigals, this person is asking for unity in my family. I pray, dear God, that they'll all come back to you.
that you bring the prodigals home. And if that's your need, claim it as well. I speak healing in that area, healing their minds. This person needs a financial breakthrough and general generational curses to be broken, fears, addiction, mel- mental illness, alcoholism, division, healing of my body. I mean, this person, they just, they gave a laundry list that's referred to as a petition specific items so father i pray for each one addictions be broken over excuse me over their families fears be lifted generational curses be broken in the name of jesus mental illness to be broken that their mental health rebound that they experience now a reconciliation in their family and healing in their bodies father thank you for each one in the name of jesus may you be blessed May you be the head and not the tail. May you be the first and not the last. May you be the may, may you may you be the leader that God's called you to be. May you be the wife whom God's called you to be. May you be the husband and the father that God's called you to be. May you be the son that God's called you to be and the daughter that God's called you to be, the uncle, the aunt. May you be that stepdad that God's called you to be, the stepmom that God's called you to be, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law. May you be the one that God's called you to be. May you fulfill your calling in the earth in the name of Jesus I pronounce a blessing over you in Jesus name amen I want you as I'm going to turn this box around because what it now says is praise reports I want you to visit our website ChristChurchUSA.org and you may have given us your your prayer request We're thankful for you. We've prayed for you and we'll continue to pray for you. But I'm also saying, as God has answered your prayers, would you then take the time to give us your praise report? We'd love to rejoice with you and be able to share a testimony as to what God's done for this time together, the blessing. So as Patrick and Ron just continue to minister to the Lord in song, I want you to know, thank you for being a part of our experience today. May the Lord bless you and may he cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace.